A significant development is on the horizon for the upcoming Starship orbital flight attempt. During a recent NASEM presentation, Lakeisha Hawkins, NASA's Assistant Deputy Associate Administrator, shared exciting news indicating that SpaceX is planning a propellant transfer demo as part of their third Starship test. This demo is tied to SpaceX's $53 million tipping point award from 2020, designated for transferring 10 tons of liquid oxygen oxygen between a Starship's header and main tank. NASA initially described this award as a large-scale flight demonstration for cryogenic propellant transfer on a Starship vehicle. Engineers from both NASA and SpaceX are collaborating intensely, examining critical aspects such as eulage, tank stability, slosh dynamics, fluid transfer procedures, guidance systems, and ship stability. According to Watson Morgan, SpaceX's development of Ship 25 and Booster 9 involves joint analysis analysis and independent assessments provided to SpaceX by NASA experts. The propellant transfer demonstration anticipated next year marks a pivotal milestone in system maturation. This moment becomes particularly significant for the human landing system as it involves crucial foundational steps that have never been successfully executed in orbit. Insights gained from the propellant transfer demonstration are expected to address lingering queries about the Starship lander, especially concerning the number of tanker launches necessary for an Artemis landing mission. Watson Morgan emphasized the importance of considerations. These data will be pivotal in shaping the strategy for Artemis missions. While the exact number of Starship tanker flights for a single Artemis mission remains tentative, Watson Morgan suggested it could range from the high single digits to the low double digits. Elon Musk has hinted at potential design enhancements for Starship, possibly featuring larger propellant tanks, which might streamline the need for numerous tanker flights. Following the Government Accounting Office's projection, or GAO for short, that the human landing system's development duration aligns with NASA's typical major projects, it's anticipated that the Artemis III mission might be pushed to early 2027 from its initial target of 2025. Undoubtedly, the monumental task of sending a Starship to the moon man's meticulous planning, especially when considering the critical necessity of refueling it in low Earth orbit. This pivotal step involves the robotic transfer of massive quantities of super-cold cryogenic propellants, a process facilitated by multiple Starship tankers purpose-built for this mission. SpaceX is actively engaged in advancing its on-orbit propellant storage and transfer technology, constituting crucial technical work integral to the success of the human landing system. The HLS program underscores that such propellant storage and transfer technologies have not previously been integrated into a propulsion system of this magnitude, indicating the pioneering nature of this venture. Numerous key systems are integral to the propellant transfer capability intended for the human landing system. These include highly sophisticated docking sensors and mechanisms pivotal for identifying, locating, and aligning the HLS Starship and the Tanker Starship for seamless fluid transfer. Additionally, these systems encompass propellant measurement technologies to accurately gauge the volume of propellant in the tanks and track the amount transferred. Equally crucial is the storage capability, strategically designed to mitigate potential fuel loss in the expanse of space. SpaceX is diligently preparing for the in-space propellant storage and transfer test, a pivotal phase aimed at further refining and advancing this cutting-edge technology. While the foundational propellant transfer technology isn't entirely novel or unprecedented, it necessitates considerable engineering effort and and developmental focus to achieve comprehensive design and rigorous testing, ensuring its seamless integration into the Artemis III mission. However, SpaceX remains vigilant, acknowledging that unforeseen challenges during spaceflight testing, particularly concerning the docking hardware, might mandate significant vehicle modifications, potentially leading to mission delays. To the discerning eye, a lone Starship offers performance on par with SpaceX's formidable Falcon Heavy when maneuvering through high Earth orbits. Yet the true revolution lies in mastering rapid reusability and orbital refueling. Even with moderate refueling, Starship's performance potential catapults it leagues ahead of existing and envisioned rockets. Given full refueling in low Earth orbit, or LEO for short, Starship's capabilities skyrocket, enabling the delivery of dozens to over a hundred tons of cargo and passengers to the red Martian surface. Moreover, with refueling in high Earth orbit, 
orbit, Starship emerges as a robust transporter, capable of landing hundreds of tons of Earth's moon and launching cargo and spacecraft across the solar system in remarkably short time frames. Meanwhile, Europe's space industry faces a remarkable shift as Avio's Vega rocket confronts a substantial setback, leaving them devoid of any operational launch vehicles. Two of the necessary tanks vital for powering the fourth stage of Vega's final flight vanished several months ago, prompting Avio to seek an alternative solution urgently. The Vega AVUM fourth stage, or should I say AVUM, standing at 1.74 meters tall with a diameter of 1.9 meters is outfitted with the Ukrainian RD869 UDMH slash NTO liquid fueled engine, and its propellant is distributed across four spherical tanks. According to sources from European Spaceflight, it was disclosed in early October that two of the critical propellant tanks for the final Vega flight had disappeared. Last week, a separate source independently verified this account. Scheduled for launch in the first half of 2024, this flight aims to deploy the European Space Agency's Biomass Earth Observation Satellite into orbit. Initially contracted in 2016 with Airbus Defence and Space UK, Biomass was allocated 229 million euros in public funding. The missing tanks were initially housed in an Avio production facility in Colaferro that underwent renovations. After the renovations completion, it was discovered that the two tanks were missing. Reportedly, these tanks hadn't been logged into Avio's company-wide asset management system, impeding the investigation into their disappearance. Despite eventually locating the tanks, the discovery was disheartening. Rendered unusable, the tanks were found damaged and discarded in a landfill among metal debris. Currently, Avio faces a challenge in obtaining new tanks for the mission, given the shutdown of all Vega production lines. Avio is exploring two potential solutions. One involves using aged propellant tanks crafted over a decade ago for Avio rocket qualification tests. Four such tanks exist, and after, re and after re qualification testing, the company may use two of these for the launch. However, concerns loom regarding the tank's condition due to their age and intended use. The other option revolves around adapting the upper stage utilized in the Vega C rocket. Despite certain similarities between the Vega and Vega C upper stages, variations exist, and the new Avum Plus upper stage was not initially designed for the original Vega rocket. The European Space Agency's willingness to support a satellite launch using such an improvised rocket remains uncertain. Yet another pressing query arises. What measures can be taken to prevent Europe's space industry from falling behind in defense. Currently, Europe heavily relies on its allies, especially in the space sector and defense. A recent set of Galileo navigation satellites aimed at providing accurate location data similar to the U.S. Global Positioning System, otherwise known as the GPS, will be launched into orbit not by European launchers, but by the American company SpaceX, owned by Elon Musk. Having support of allies like the U.S. and access to their successful private companies is beneficial. However, outsourcing to U.S. companies fails to bolster European autonomy. Europe should take more responsibility in these endeavors. While the immediate outcome may seem positive, Europe successfully deploying its satellites into space, it exacerbates a larger issue, Europe's failure to nurture its domestic space industry and strive for greater independence. The challenge lies not so much in the lack of funds or interest, but in unnecessarily complex conditions for investment. In a healthier commercial environment, where smaller firms compete for lucrative space contracts issued by a central space agency, investment avenues would naturally become more accessible. This echoes the operational model observed in the U.S. with agencies like the Space Development Agency and NASA. These entities outline their requirements, such as satellite launching systems, and then allow private enterprises to vie for opportunities to develop and deliver them. ESA could adopt a similar approach. However, this would necessitate a departure from its current policy of geographic allocation. Presently, ESA allocates funding to each member state in roughly the same proportion as their contributions to the agency, a policy born out of a desire for equitable distribution among member nations. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you want to support our channel even further, you can hop on over to our Patreon through the link in the description below. Sign up today and become a patron to gain access to exclusive content. Sounds exciting, right? In any case, we still appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up, and happy holidays.